Hello, I'm Jordan Atten. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to be doing a first impressions. I don't want to say review because it is foundation, but the first impressions of the Pat McGrath fetish skin fetish foundation. So I went in store to get this. I have to drive a little far um, to go to this for that carries like, you know, higher end brands, but I was really excited they had it in store. Unfortunately, they only had the foundation. They didn't have the primer or the setting powders. I guess those aren't going to be in store for another month, they said. Um, but we are going to try out the foundation today. I'm going to let you know what the Sephora, Sephora employees today were actually really useful. So we are going to go over that. Um, I picked up two shades and we're going to see what works for me. I also did some swatches if you're in my range. I also swatched the lightest and the darkest ones and took pictures. That way, hopefully I could help you guys out. So please don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate you guys. And yeah, let's go ahead and try this out. I'm really excited for this one. Okay, so before I put this on the face, let's see what it says. It, everything, as far as, nothing gives you like an hour, like the, you know how certain foundations, they're like, I last 24 hours. It doesn't say that. It does say long wearing, customizable foundation that builds from sheer to medium coverage in a wide range of universal hues that manifest the ultimate sublime skin standard. Um, finish is natural. Coverage says medium. And then it says for normal, dry, combination, and oily. So that's a lot of things. As far as my skin, I am pretty normal skin, I would say. Um, I have dry patches, but my skin isn't overall dry. It says free of parabens, long-lasting, ultimate smoothness, luminous finish. It's supposed to be lightweight. So let's go ahead and put this on the face. But... As far as what you are getting, it is $68, the price of a lady. Um, 1.18 ounces. So yeah, let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since they didn't have the primer, I was really like, I wanna see if the primer was worth it. Uh, I am gonna use my Milk Makeup Grip Primer on one side of the face. So I'm only gonna do it on one side because the lady at Sephora, Right, the employees, not even just one, like they were all like, I don't know, they were in a really good mood today. I don't know if it's Friday or what, but usually they don't pay that much attention to me. Um, but they were super like friendly and nice and they were like, you know, we had to try this out for a day. We all really liked it. We compared it to, they said it was all comparable to like Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. But she said, we obviously don't have the primers to try, but they were like very adamant about like, don't, like it's very temperamental with primers and we shouldn't, like when we tried it out for a day, we didn't use any primer, we just moisturized. Um, they were like very much like, you have to use our specific, like the Pat McGrath primer with this. So, which sounds like more like, you know, obviously it's the whole point of to sell, you know what I mean? So um, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna try my normal primer because I feel weird not trying out one. And then on this side, we, I did, uh, moisturize my whole face with Tatcha Dewy Luminous, what is it, the Luminous Silk Moisturizer. So this side, it does have moisturizer on it. I was like, I can't just go in with, with nothing. And then this side obviously has the primer. So we can kind of see if there's any difference in a few hours. You know, we'll see. I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so I'm gonna use shade medium 16. I am going to use my finger. Yes, one of my nails broke off. Oh, it hurts so bad. I was messing around at work, so my boss was like, can you do this like squat thing? And I was like, let me try. And I had to hold my foot, like the heel of my foot, and it like snapped back. People across the room could hear, hear my nail like snap, and they were like, oh. And I was just like, I know, it hurts so bad. So I'm gonna go get it fixed like later today or this weekend, all right. I think we're good. I'm just, I'm just dotting it out here. Uh, and we'll see how buildable it is. I am someone who, preference-wise, I like... Not that I like to look like I have a lot of foundation on, but if I'm going to wear foundation, I still want it to, like, even out. I definitely have some discoloration. Like, there's just lighter spots that I have on my skin. I've been like that since I was a kid. I'm going to use the Hourglass Foundation Brush, and then I'm going to go in 
with a beauty blender is what I usually do over it if I decide I want more coverage. Uh, I don't really like the idea of the beauty blender soaking up my product. To be honest, I would rather use a brush over a beauty blender in terms of like, I use a beauty blender for foundation, I mean for concealer, but I don't generally use it. Ooh, I wash my brushes. I love this scent. It's like a, I like the Japanese cleaner and it's like a nice fresh scent, like oranges. I picked up the lavender one, that was awful. That was not good. I don't like lavender smells. All right, let me look here and zoom here. And then I will zoom you guys in as well. So shade-wise, I think this is perfect for me. Like I like the shade I picked out and then I got a darker one as well. I ended up, so the reason why I haven't showed you guys the bottle is because, you know, some people are like super, it's, it's hard to make everyone happy here on YouTube. Um, there are so many foundations coming out, right? We have, Urban Decay Naked Skin, we have, or not Naked Skin, but like we have an Urban Decay that's gonna replace the Naked Skin. And then we also have, um, what are the other ones? There's Charlotte Tilbury one that's coming out. Dosa Colors just came out. So I picked up samples of everything and that way I'm not spending money on something that's not gonna work for me like this one. I mean, $68 an expensive foundation, like, I'm gonna make sure I wear it a few times, make sure I love it, and then I have no problem spending $68, but I'd rather do that than get the incorrect shade, you know, I hadn't bought it online, and then, you know, not like the formula. Like, I just feel like that's the best way to try it out, and they always give you enough in the sample to try out at least three or four wear times, so that's enough for me to know if I want something, but I would feel more guilty buying it just for the sake of the video and holding up a bottle to be like, Oh, actually, I really don't like this. You know what I mean? So, yes, I wanted you guys to know that. But so far, I'm actually... So, my one reason for really not wanting to, like, actually purchase, one, money-wise, <laughs> and two was more because it said it was a light coverage. And, like, you know, Pat McGrath obviously works with models. They have, like, beautiful skin, you know, so... I was kind of like, that's not gonna work for me. Like I want at least my zits covered and my face to be even. Like I am not a light coverage person. I'm definitely more of a medium is my happy point. And I found that matte foundations aren't my best friends. I like to be a little bit, you know, look a little dewy, a little fresh. So I actually do enjoy the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. So I was kind of happy she said that, but I also know a lot of people like if you have oil or your skin, it's not really the best for you. Um, ooh, it's crazy how pale I look underneath the lights compared to like what my face actually looks like. So I might turn off the lights a little bit just to kind of show you guys. But this is up close. I could definitely see why they were comparing this to like the luminous silk because it is, even though it doesn't say that it's luminous, it is pretty, like it has a nice little dewy, dewy vibe going on. Let's go in with just a tiny, tiny bit more. And this time I am going to use a beauty blender, just kinda add a little bit more coverage, which really is just the mineral, like right here is more where I like coverage. I don't mind that the outsides don't really have that much. But to be honest, I don't even feel like I needed to do that. I'm doing it for the sake of the video to see if it's buildable, but I don't think that it was necessary for what I personally go for. For $68, this needs to look good and I need to be able to like crack open into it like on a daily basis, I feel like. I cannot, I feel like that's the one thing that I do really horribly, plus get lipstick, you know, foundation on my lips, um, is when something's expensive, I tend not to reach for it and I'm like, oh, only buy that for special occasions. Well, guess what? For $68 and if I were only to wear it for special occasions, well then I would never wear it. I'd wear it like twice a year and it would go bad. So I need to get it for the intention of like using it more often is what I found with foundations. Every time I say I'm gonna only use it for special occasions, it expires before, you know, I don't even go through half a bottle. So, all right, it did build. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see a little bit more. I will go ahead and tell you my I don't wear a lot on my forehead because my forehead doesn't really need the coverage. It's nice to me. It's just my cheeks and my nose. 
Foundation will generally break up on my nose pretty quickly. That is the first place that it will go from. So let me zoom you guys in a little bit more. All right, super up close and personal. I'm like, oh man, look at, I'm gonna use some brightening underneath my nose today. But I wanted to show you guys really how it's looking. It feels very nice and lightweight. I don't feel like I have like a whole bunch of foundation on. It's definitely not a heavy foundation. And I better not hear any comments about my eyebrows. I can't make everybody happy. Like, I don't like my eyebrows either, but it's if I fill them in too much, it's like they're so dark. And if I fill them in more like a natural, like, like this, then it's, what did you do, you know? I don't care. As long as I have eyebrows on, I, I feel like I, I won for the day. <laughs> Like that's my effort point of like, it's the one thing I will do before I leave the house. Okay, so in terms of, it's a little sticky. So I definitely think we need to like set it with a powder. I don't think you could not, like it's, it's not horribly sticky, but it is sticky. All right, so I am going to now go in with concealer, do the rest of my face, come back. We'll see what it looks like with everything layered over it. I don't want this video to get too long and like try to do my whole face. I want it to be more about foundation. So I will be back, we'll check in and then we'll do some check-ins throughout the day. Okay, so this was what it looks like with no like setting spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it with the Caudalie Elixir. Ah, I hate this part. I'm never gonna like this, ever. Okay, and then I want to add some highlights. As far as everything that everything blended on top, totally normal. I didn't have any problems. It did use my normal products that I know work well. I was like, I'm not trying anything new in this. I'm going to use my Rach Loves palette. Pull some nice highlight. I feel like this that went a little too intense, but that's okay. All right. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in. I'm probably gonna turn off the lights a little bit or lower it so you guys can really get a good look. All right, so this is what everything looks like layered on top. I didn't have any issues. I did use a few different setting powders. So um, I used the Fenty underneath my eye area and then I used the Huda Beauty on the side. Yeah, that way I could kind of see if any of the powders made a difference or like if anything was weird, but Nothing happened, everything layered completely fine. Fenty bronzer, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm trying not to zoom you guys so into like my nose area. I'm gonna try really hard, hopefully it doesn't keep running. Sometimes that just happens when I put on foundation too. Um, but this is what my skin is looking like. So as you can see, if anything on my nose is a little, you know, my nose is a little iffy. This is not contour, this is just sunspots. I love it when people are like my freckles and I'm like it's just sun damage <laughs> um, even though I wear sunscreen so there's no contour products on my nose this is just how it since foundation doesn't stick to it well um, but yeah everything layered well I'm going to check in in a few hours but so far it feels very nice it is nice and lightweight I really don't feel it I'm pretty impressed at this point because like I said, I, I was thinking it was gonna be such a light coverage that I was like, oh, I'm not gonna like it. But right now my skin looks, it looks good. So I will check in in a little bit and we will see what happens. I'm just in my hallway. I wanted you guys to kind of see this in natural lighting. So this is what we are looking like. It's been about three hours, so I am still super impressed by this. There's no separation yet. I actually feel like it looks better than when I first applied it, like my natural oils kind of mix, and I'm super psyched about it so far. So let's go ahead. I like my ears turn green. We're gonna cover that. <laughs> Just because I'm allergic to like any fake earrings. So I'm gonna check it in another few hours, but so far so good. It's like my my skin is obviously a little bit shiny, but definitely not oily. Like it looks healthy, like nice and like like a fresh look. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna check in a little bit. Okay, we are rounding out at the five, no, six hours. It's been six hours. So I am going to be done after this check-in because I wanna get this out for you guys today and hopefully you'll appreciate it. 
um, but I already edited the rest of the video so now I can just quickly go do it and I will say I I look good like my foundation actually looks really well for being six hours I don't typically like I am someone who really sticks to drugstore foundations for the most part and then I have a few or high end and I can honestly say like this, I, I don't think you're, it's just expensive for the name, Pat McGrath. I think it really is a beautiful foundation. Obviously, as my oils kind of like naturally sunk in, I actually liked it more over time. Like I said, I prefer more of a luminous. I don't know if it's going to be the best for like oily skins because as you can see, like this definitely looks more luminous, like radiant over time, but it didn't seem to like settle into anything my nose actually doesn't look bad like I'm thoroughly like impressed so I'm gonna zoom you guys out and we're gonna have a few more talks because I do want to mention a few things okay so overall like I said I'm super impressed by this I will totally based off of this for today I'm gonna wear it more in the next few days like I said I got two different samples so I would buy the foundation like I feel comfortable like even like just knowing how expensive it is recommending this foundation if you have similar skin type to me like I said I don't know if oily is going to be the best because it does mix with your natural oils a little bit and that's what gives it this beautiful look I will say ordering online might be a little tough like I looked online at the website I'm going to pop up a picture of the girl that I would have chosen my shade which would have been 15 like I would have looked at her and been like oh that's my skin tone and it would have been too light for sure. Like I feel like I could even go darker than what I did today. Like I'll try out the other sample, which is 17, but today I'm doing medium 16. Weird thing about that is it says that it has red undertones. I definitely didn't feel that way. Let me know what you guys thought. The 15 had yellow undertones, but I felt like it was gonna be too light for me. And I think the 17 has more of the olive. So. For me, I don't feel like this has red undertones, and if it does, then maybe I'm a red undertone girl because I love the way that this matches my skin. Like, as you can see, my arm is a little bit darker, so I could have gone a shade darker. So I would just say be weary of ordering online. Maybe order a shade deeper. I don't want to steer you guys in the wrong direction, but I chose, yeah, like if I had just chosen mine off of online, I probably would have chosen a, like, too light of a shade based on the pictures even though I do love that she did that on her website. Another great thing about the website is you can order the primer, the foundation, and the setting powder for 150, which really brings down the price considering, I think the powder is 55 on its own, the foundation is 68, and then the primer is 60. So you do save a lot on that bundle. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. If I watched more reviews on the powder and the, the primer, maybe, Tatcha is the only primer I've really spent that much money on. Uh, but foundation is something where I don't really buy a lot of high end. I feel like drugstore does just as good as a job. Like my, yeah, like L'Oreal Freshwear. The other one I really love right now is the Beauty Blender foundation. So based off of this though, I'm like, I love my skin in this. I feel so confident. I still like that you can see little peaks of my skin. Like you can definitely still see little freckles, but it's still coverage. I feel like this should have been marketed as a, as a medium. You can also use your fingers, which would probably give you that lighter coverage. I'm not someone who likes to use my fingers for foundation. Um, I just don't. I don't know what it is. I just feel dirty. Like I don't know. I feel like that would make me feel like I could then touch my face all day long, which is a problem for me. But overall, I am super impressed. I really love this. I would do what I do if you're nervous about it. If your Sephora carries it, go get a sample try it out. I'd love to know what you guys think, so definitely let me know your thoughts. I will let you know how it wore for longer in the comments down below, but I want to get this video out to you guys, and six hours is a decent amount of time. I know that most of us, you know, for a night out, that's okay, but definitely for working, you know, then you gotta have it on, like, all day, so I totally get that, but yeah, that is it for me. I am very happy with this. That is all I have to say. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe before we leave. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.